We're coming low out of the rising sun, and about a mile out, we'll put on the music. You think? Yeah, I use Wagner. Scares the hell out of the slopes. My boys love it. I'm John Milius. I'm a filmmaker, a historian, and a storyteller. John Millius had more movies made than any writer in the history of Hollywood. He was really one of the first guys who said, hey, this is how people talk. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? He doesn't write for pussies and he doesn't write for women. He writes for men, because he's a man. He's not one of those directors that just goes from one movie to the next. He made the most defining films of those decades. It's pretty staggering, the journey he took to get there. John is such a great storyteller just in, in life. Francis couldn't tell a story like John. George is a great storyteller. He couldn't tell a story like John. None of us. He likes to blow it up bigger in life. And then he's created this persona. I've heard that he referred to himself as a Zen anarchist. I hear Millie's pull a gun on some executive. I like John because he says what he thinks, although I sometimes worry that he doesn't think. <laughs> He's the teddy bear with, a, with an AK-47. He wanted to make himself into a legend. Remember those Bud Ice commercials um, with the penguin? I don't think so. Have I talked to you on the show about there this was before? frogs. There was the, the Bud Wise Wise Er. There was uh, penguins. There was the Bud Ice shortly lived. You know, uh -huh. ice malt. It was their version of Ice House. Right. Yeah. And uh, it was like this. It was one of those like, oh, the calls coming from inside the house commercials, right? Uh -huh. Except like the person on the other line just kept singing. Strangers in the night, just yeah. the doobie doobie doo. Sure. And then they're like, it's in the house. To and what end? She goes upstairs. Why does that make me want to drink butt ice? Well, there's just some penguin that broke into her house and was prank this calling her. ringing a bell now. And stealing her. I think I am kind of remembering the pervert penguin. Either way, we need to have the beer companies campaign and, and you know, showing commercials for the kids again. You, you know what else I like? What's that? What's that? Yeah. Yeah. They need to be targeting children again. Like, that makes me want to pound beers. What's up? Yeah. Instead, kids these days want to pound White Claws, Nate. Mm, you're really upset about this whole White Claws. Ah, it makes me so upset. In the nation right now. It's because you've seen really, me shotgun. Really getting under your skin. You've seen me shotgun a beer or two. Yeah, I feel like you feel like these kids are, are stealing your thunder. No, it's like they're not because they're just chugging water, essentially. And that's not impressive. Mm-hmm. There's no skill to shotgun in a white claw. I don't know if they're trying to impress anyone. But the, it's not cool. It's not anything. It's awful. You're not going to get any arguments from you, me there. You're just like, let me drink this water really quick. And that's all you're doing. And I, I haven't seen one kid. is not cool. I haven't seen one kid smash a can on his head yet. Mm. Which is my signature finish. Yeah. You know? I feel like once people are smashing cans on their head in public places... Things get dangerous. If I challenge start getting thrown out of the any bar. one of these kids to shotgun a real beer with me, they couldn't. They couldn't do it. I don't, I don't want you smashing cans on your head out in public. Why you're not? Just, you're too old for this, Matt. No, this is, this isn't but that's end well. I'm telling that's, you right now. That's more of our point here. You know, we're supposed to be slightly threatened by this younger generation, mm -hmm. and we're supposed to, you know, overcompensate with masculinity. When I was a kid, Marilyn Manson was blowing all the parents' minds. They didn't know what to think about the Marilyn Manson. These days, what do you got? Cardi B? Oh. I'm not afraid of Cardi oh. B. She's no. not making me uncomfortable. She's just stupid. No, she's no one's gonna well, hang stuff kids a, like these days are just just stupid. You haven't heard anybody hang one of these mass shootings on Cardi B, have you? Mm, I haven't been paying attention. I imagine somebody has to. Nah, I feel like Cardi B would just make me want to kill myself. How many mass shootings happened today? Today? Mm -hmm. Just three. Mm. Yeah. One of them had to have been Cardi B related. Yeah, maybe. 
the odds just say that it's got to gotta be the case one of these days. When we were younger, you weren't shit unless you were rocking like a red dog shirt. Uh-huh. Or, you Co-ed know. Co-ed naked. Some kind of Budweiser t-shirt. You know, not a, a fucking... Big dog? Yeah. Not a fucking White Claw shirt. Mm. Those, those, uh, I haven't seen anybody wearing shirts yet. Those co-ed they naked. They got merch. Those are great. Co-ed naked White yeah. Claw chugging. Those, no, no. Uh, uh, you don't like that? No. We're not, I don't know how to do it either way. It's baby oil and blow. Uh-huh. Uh, we're your oh, hosts. It? Yeah, it's a okay. action palooza. It's officially, uh, I, should, I should push record. You, you, were we supposed to be recording oh. this? Uh, surprise me. All right. I am one half of the hosts. I'm Matt O. Uh huh. You, sir, are the Bartles to my James. Oh, you are lovely. Nate Adams. Oh, hoy, hoy. I uh, had a picture with uh, Bartles and James when I was a little kid. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't really them. It was just a cardboard cutout of Bartles and James. Oh. There was this thing set up in a mall in Indianapolis where there uh-huh. was just cardboard cutouts of famous people. Yeah, I remember and then that you store. would pay to get your picture taken with them. Yeah. And th- looking back on it, I'm just like, why would anybody pay to do that? Was that in the old... That's uh, a waste of money. Was that in the Circle Mall or was that in the uh, in old the, train uh, station? Yeah, the old train yeah. station mall. Yeah, they so. used to have a great t-shirt shop over there, too. Ooh, a lot of Seinfeld t-shirts. shirts. At that t-shirt shop, I'll tell you that right now. You know? I think I got some some ones with Gary Larson Far Side comics on oh. them from that shirt or that place probably. I'd love to correctly. see those now. I bet they rip. Oh, pretty cool. Uh, pretty yeah. cool. I had that one with the, the dumb kid just trying to like push on a door that's a pole door. Uh, <laughs> what an idiot! It's funny. Do kids even know what Far Side is it's anymore? Funny. Kids got to know what Far Side is. I don't think so. It was, it, was, it, was, it was all the rage when I was a youngster. Oh, mine too. Real subversive humor in those comics, Matt. Beers for children. I'll tell you what, I woke up naked this comments. morning and my underwear was out back. That's how drunk I got yesterday, man. <laughs> I got confused by that statement. I don't know. I, you I'm, left your I'm, underwear at Outback? I'm, Did you have a it, diarrhea incident? It was, it was out in my backyard. Oh, it was in your Just, backyard. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why. What do you think unfolded? I'm hoping I just like got in a hot tub or something. Yeah, you got a hot tub back there. But I don't I know. I would assume you would just you were just definitely like, well. wandered home blind drunk. Um from my, where? It was just, you know, up the neighborhood spot. Okay. But uh I left my, my car uptown, thankfully, because I was so blind uptown, drunk. Uptown Nate. And I got here and my brain wouldn't work anymore. Mm. And I couldn't yeah. pull up the simple code to open my garage door. Oh. So I was just wandering around outside for a long time, like trying to MacGyver a way to get into my house and like trying to make my brain work to pull out this simple four digit code. That had to be frightening and for there was that an grown em- autistic man that lives next embarrassing, door. Embarrassing, embarrassing amount of time that I was just out there dealing with this problem before I remembered hey, you just got your keys in your pocket, asshole. Just mm. unlock your door and walk inside. What were you like? Were you like checking windows and stuff? That pretty much, yeah. I think I was pretty close to just like throwing a potted plant through a window. Yeah, a lot of times, like when I have to get in drunk problem solving, mm-hmm. like situations like that, I do a lot of like potted plants for me. I'll do a, like a little wider than a. This is how I do my thinking when uh-huh. I'm in that in that mode. I do a little wider than a than a shoulder width stance. Sure. I just kind of gently like rock back and forth a little mm-hmm. bit. Yeah. And like kind of do like. Totally like chin, hypnotized. Chin towards my chest and a lot of like... <sighs> Look at him, he's totally hypnotized. <sighs> like heavy breathing yeah, like that. I, I imagine that's what I was doing. I feel like... And then at some point, yeah. I was naked, but I don't yeah. remember why that happened. You got privacy fences. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, who gives a shit? Mm-hmm. It's just an extension of your house mm-hmm. back there. Yeah. Your property. You do all sorts of weird stuff back there. Yeah. You voted Trump just so you could do that. Go fuck none yourself. none the wiser. Yeah. Sons of bitches. Who is? Who are you getting mad at now? I don't know. I wasn't angry today, I don't mm. think. Mm. But I'm coming in hot on yeah, this one, huh? Coming in real hot. There's a lot of repressed shit going on. So uh, just, just thinking of all the watching Conan yeah. get all that uh, just thinking of all the atrocities I lived through. Pumping yeah. through your body probably. Floating There's a lot of veins. man meat on display in this movie we're watching this week. And lady meat. Mm, that's for damn sure. Uh, not very meaty, though. There's some pretty skinny white bitches in this movie. Uh, Foreign white could've, bitches. Yeah, that could've, they could have been meatier. Let's, yeah. uh, we're burying the lead here. Let's There's, get into this rundown of... Uh, 
No dirty hairy strip club white chicks. Ooh, that's my that's favorite. Maybe the best scene in any movie we've seen so far. Just that dirty from, hairy strip club from scene. From here on out in this podcast, I'm probably gonna judge all nudity scenes we get to mm-hmm. the nudity and dirty hair. Rightly so. Hot Marie or Hot Mary and mm-hmm. the uh, the yeah. girls of the strip club. She had some floppers. But we're not talking dirty hair again. This rundown is brought to us by the Trinidad Sour, which is yep. the drink that we're sipping on right here. It's a very bitter, very heavy drink invented by a New York bartender named Giuseppe Gonzalez. It's a he good dude. It's the reason why we're so loose on the mics right now. He was a, one of the Ninja Turtles. Loose lips. Sinking ships over here. Uh, this rundown mm. is of Conan the Barbarian from 1982. Runtime of this film is a whopping 129 minutes. Way too long. Mm-hmm. Uh, the budget was a cool 16 million. This thing, I, this thing, 16. That's, that's what I That's what I saw on my I half-assed found, internet research. I found 30, sir. Oh, maybe 30. Yeah, this one had a. I saw. I saw a 16 number. I saw 130 million is what it is. What it pulled in is, is what I got. Oh, so excuse me. Budget 20. This, was, this is a wild success. It was not. People love this movie. It only made thirty nine. What movie were you checking? One hundred and thirty million. This where, is, where I'm, are you I'm, checking? I'm fucking. It's on the Wikipedia. Wikipedia ah. never lies. Everything I saw was said. It was just a modest. No, whatever success. you're looking at is bullshit. This kicked off an entire sword and sandals bullshit Dungeons and Dragons trend in fucking Hollywood. Conan the Barbarian imitators were all over the place. Krull, Beastmaster, all this shit was coming after it. This movie came in hot. You're talking about the Jason Momoa one, right? Mm, is that what... <laughs> that, that's have, the problem uh, here? Well, oh, no. We might have watched separate movies uh, here. One I saw was uh, written and directed by John Milius, who is the focus of this month we've been doing. Um, it stars Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I didn't watch that. As the Conan. Uh, uh, that's a problem. Ooh. Oh. Talking different movies here. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is the Terminator. He became an actor, and then he played Conan. Mako became the president. Is our narrator. That's pretty cool. He's got a one-word name. He's uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Also, Akira the Wizard in this movie. But uh, you probably know Mako from the extremely just like impressive string of films he did in the early '90s. Yep, where he was Mr. Sakamoto in the Jim Belushi movie, taking care of business. Take and he was care of me, Kim yeah. and Jeff Speakman's The Perfect Weapon. And he was Mr. Lee in Chuck Norris's Sidekicks. That's where Maria knew him from. And he was uh, Connie Mitsu in RoboCop 3. That's a run right there, brother. I'll that's, buy that for a dollar. That's, that's, a, that's a string of fucking movies right there. That's the one without Peter Weller. James Earl Jones is our bad guy, Tulsa Doom. He's a leader of a snake cult. Uh, you know James Earl Jones from being Darth Vader mm-hmm. and uh, being the king and coming to America. And being the old blind guy in the sand a lot. Yep. So, uh, uh, Max von Sydow, I'm throwing in here. A little, a little credit his way. He's playing King Osric. Osric. Fancy people probably know Max von Sydow for being in uh, the, King the Seventh Osric-y. Seal. The Seventh Seal is a really respected movie. But real ass people know him as uh, being Emperor Ming from uh, Flash Gordon. That's, that's how he made his bones. Mm. That's for damn sure. Mm. Tagline. Conan the Barbarian. Thief. Warrior, gladiator, king. That about sums it up right there. Uh, plot summary. <sighs> this is let's see let's see how they do it here. There's how are you gonna summarize this plot? <laughs> what do you got for us? They say a film adaptation of the classic sword and sorcery hero Conan the Barbarian. A horde of rampaging warriors massacre the parents of young Conan and enslave the young child for years on the wheel of pain. As a sole survivor of the childhood massacre, Conan has released some slavery and taught the ancient arts of fighting. Transforming himself into a killing machine, Conan travels into the wilderness to seek vengeance on Tulsa Doom, the man responsible for killing his family. In the wilderness, Conan takes up with the thieves Valeria and Subotai. The group comes upon King Osric, who wants the trio of warriors to help Osric? rescue his daughter, who has joined Doom in the hills. I'm glad somebody else wrote it down. Doom in the Hills. I could probably watch this movie like five times in a row and not be able to fucking tell you what it's about or Mm -hmm. what the hell happens in this Mm -hmm. goddamn thing. No. I've just been staring at this movie all day long. Yeah. It's like playing in the background. It just feels like it's been a day of fever dreams. Yeah. Like I don't know what I really saw watching this movie, what I just hallucinated, what might have just like, you know, 
came out of my brain when I was wandering around outside naked at five in the morning this morning. Ew, that's fair. It's, uh, you, uh, it's been a confusing 24 hours for me. You've seen this film a good handful of times, though. I've seen this movie quite a few times. Yeah. Um, the first time I've watched it in a long time with the actual audio, like yeah. paying attention to it, because this movie uh, kind of infamously has the coolest fucking director's commentary of all time with uh, Milius and uh, Schwarzenegger on the track. Really? And back in the day, me and my college roommates had this drinking game we'd play called the Conan Drinking Game. That's a pretty good title. Which is we'd put this movie on with the director's commentary, and everybody would have to drink anytime Schwarzenegger said, that's so funny, or I remember this, or when he starts describing how gorgeous one of the women on the screen is. I think anytime Milius calls a woman a Valkyrie is also one of the one of the ways you mm. drink. But it's so entertaining watching this with the director's commentary because clearly Schwarzenegger has no concept of what a director's commentary is or like what you're supposed to do. So what he does is just describes visually what's happening on the screen at every moment nice. as if like you can't see it yeah as if you're like a blind person and he's just i remember to, this and this now is, here it is this is a good part you see, i'm walking through the hills here and the, the, the dogs now there are the dogs they're chasing me that's the whole thing that and him just asking milius like to explain the movie to him because he doesn't understand why anything's happening huh it's fucking insane i highly recommend anybody who's got their hands on the dvd Go out there and uh, DVD. watch this with that director's commentary. But other than that, you know, I'd watch this in full screen. And, you watched it in full screen, right? You got to. Yeah. Watch this scan, in baby. bits and pieces as a kid. Um, pieces, catching it like on cable and, and whatnot. Yeah. Very rare, I think, that I ever watch Conan the Barbarian just from like start to finish. Sit down like I'm going to watch the whole movie. I was going to say, this might have been the first time I ever watched yeah. the movie start to finish. I mean... Only for drinking game purposes. And I got to say, when you just you, you, you actually pay attention to it and you're just moment to moment, you're watching it. God, this movie makes no sense at all. This is this has got to be one of the biggest examples of just cocaine running wild on a movie set that I've fucking ever seen in my life, man. And from what I gather, two hours and nine minutes of a film that Oliver Stone originally wrote is four hours long. Oh, I was going to say, you know, there's got to be like a four hour cut of this somewhere yeah. just like. They had to have shot so much more shit than this. Yeah, it's my understanding. Oliver Stone was like, it's going to be four hours long. Because it it's needs be to great. be. Yeah. And uh, Milius was like, don't worry, Universal. I got this. You've got Oliver Stone involved. You've got Schwarzenegger involved. You've got Milius involved. You've got the fucking Dino De Laurentiis. Yeah, John involved. Milius involved as the voice of reason. Bear so, that in mind. I mean,. Just the the cocaine that had to have been snorted up people's noses from conception to this or film out of some of those white girls' out. asses. <laughs> or blown up some of those white girls' asses. So so um the bullet points here, I guess, as we're getting into my first bullet point is just this movie. Could you? I think you could take the scenes and just like. Mix them up, just shuffle the deck and play them in a completely different order, and you wouldn't notice. No, it's all about that score, baby. Well, this, the score is ninety percent of why this fucking thing's working. Yeah. Um, I think maybe this is the score that launched an entire genre of movies because everybody liked this music so much that they're like, we're just gonna keep making muscled up guys yeah. carrying sword movies. Towards the end, there's a piece when it's like the big climactic showdown. The music that's going on. The Phantom Menace music ripped it off, like, clearly. Oh, man. Just the whole... It's like, that's the same song. Phantom kind Menace is of cool music, too, and they're ripping off cool from music. the best. That's, yeah. uh, talking about that double lightsaber fight yeah. song right there. And yeah. That, oh, hell and yeah. that Darth Maul, uh... Mm-hmm. That's, that's, Darth Maul. It's maybe the only... Qui-Gon Jinn. The only good Star Wars Obi-Wan scene... Obi-Wan Kenobi. ...that's, uh, been made since the 1980s. You excited for that? People just still love Star Wars for some reason. You excited for that Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan Kenobi show they're like making? 90% of Star Wars is bad. People just still love it so much. <sighs> Why are you gonna make a show with Ewan McGregor? Ewan McGregor is a fucking cinema star. I don't like that everything's gotta be like a streaming I'm service star. fucking series Ewan now. McGregor. Just make a movie. Make, make a fucking movie. A movie. I can sit down and watch it in 90 minutes. I could be done with it and then it's over. I don't want a whole fucking series of shit. And everything like, what episode you want? 
Are you binging yeah. it? Are you binging this one? You binging that one? Have you got through this thing yet? No. That's, I don't have time for all this shit, man. Uh, I would like to turn your attention towards uh, porn parody films. Uh-huh. You, you might find it as a happy compromise. Sure, yeah. Because they all clock in around, like, 90 minutes. Because <laughs> they don't want to give you too much Perfect. For, for, you know, your dollar's worth. Do they still make porn parody yeah. movies? Yeah. Okay. I'm the sure. internet had... There's one of those that companies that does that. No, no, you can find them somewhere. Just uh, sniff it out. You're going to love it. I don't remember the last time I've seen a porn movie that was an actual, like, story movie thing. I thought they just shot, like, uh, just sex scenes now and threw them up on the internet. Not the porn parodies, sir. They still try to I shoehorn it up. out there doing the work. A, a plot of a movie, yeah. Check them out. Go rent it. Go uh, to Oasis Video when we're done here. And rent yourself. Is seven still or eight. open? Yeah. Uh, Conan on DVD. Is that the last DVD. surviving video store that exists? In this area, I yeah. I can't think of it. Yeah. Kept that room. Family video and uh, Lowell died finally. Yeah, that's for sure. So. That weird guy that ran the video away. always tried to get us to rent porn. Oh, look the other way. Come on, kids. It's cool. I, I went there. You just want to watch Terminator, man. I went there a couple years ago. We don't want to watch porno movies together. That's not what tonight's going to be. I told him where I worked, and he mm -hmm. told me all about somebody that I worked with and how he had to ban him because they owed $1,000 in back rent for porn. How do you keep letting somebody rent when they owe you that much money? How do you, how do you give it to that point? This guy's got a soft spot for porn. Yeah, you can have another porno film, sure, but you got to bring back the last you gotta, you gotta one. you got to pay for at least eight of those 30 that you have. This is ridiculous. You can't just keep letting you walk out of the store with them. So, speaking of ridiculous, Conan's family gets killed, and uh, he gets taken as a slave, I guess? Yeah. He's chained up to a, a bunch wheel. of other little kids. They're in a nice little chain line. A little uh, yeah. human centipede style thing going on. And they drag him through the snow to the desert? Question mark? Mm, never quite sure where yeah. we are. What land this is. Is this supposed to be a historical thing? Or is this like a, a different world? Is this, is this a full fantasy thing? I don't know. I think it's supposed to be. It's impossible to know because nothing gets explained to you. And there's basically no talking in this movie yeah. whatsoever. That's fair. I think you're a good 18 minutes into the movie yeah. before Conan even says one word. <laughs> yeah, even Wally ripped off this intro, you know? Oh, yeah, that's, that's yeah. true. Wally's Everybody knows. fucking bullshit. Just Conan wannabe shit. Wally, that fucking Conan Pixar. wannabe. Uh, Sorry, it's all this fucking credit. All they're doing is ripping off Conan movies. So, young Conan's chained to the, what did you say it was called? The Wheel of Pain? Why is it? I don't even know what it was for. Well, see... Was um, it drilling? Arnold and Milius have this conversation when uh, I'm glad you you watched the director's like, commentary. Here is I am we are on the wheel of pain. Here is the scene right now. You can see the I am walking. What is this? Is it? Oh, oh, it's grinding something, right? And he's just like, yes, they're grinding. They're grinding. Uh, the wheel grinds their their grain into bread. He's just like, where do they get the grain? Where do they get the grain? <laughs> It's an insane question. John, where did you get the grain? Uh, probably there's like fields, this is, Arnold, this or whatever. This is a desert. This is a desert so, yeah, everywhere. Theoretically, this there's is no really grain. established. But uh, what they're doing is grinding grain into bread and using oh. slave labor to do it. But uh, I don't know. That's the only kind of bread I eat. <laughs> yeah. Slave bread. Slave bread is just a little bit more delicious. Just that little bit of love that goes into it. Yep. A little more flavor to that po' boy sandwich that you make yourself. So I think what what uh, what the Wheel of Pain is establishing here is... Uh, it's turning Arnold into a man. It's that that which does not kill us makes us stronger, man. it did. Oh, that's, that's a right. quote from yeah. Friedrich Nietzsche. Yeah. 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 That appears at the beginning of this movie before we see anything else. So you got to remember that 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 very poignant, very uh, important. It's like what, I need to what watch. Kind of a fucking asshole starts their movie by putting that quote up on the screen. Uh, that is an insane choice. That's like the douchebag friend of yours, or like guy you kind of know or associate with, like in college, and he's like, "Homie, I'm taking like film classes. I'm gonna uh -huh. like write some movies." Yeah, that's right. And like he like 
finds like the stupidest like quote out of like John the Milius is most that guy. basic <laughs> novel and it's just like it was the best of times it was the worst yeah. of times like get it like because it's like it's times. gonna be about like these kids growing up and, blah, blah, blah. and it's like eh, boy save it pal i don't want to hear it so there's just, just nobody saying no anywhere no. on this set throughout this whole fucking process it's just like whatever coked up fucking insane ideas that pop through Milius's head everybody's just like sure let's shoot it Let's get it on film. The only thing that I am thankful for about this opening 30 minutes where they just plow through his origin story uh-huh. was that it prevented the movie from being three hours. That's true. That that Mako narration really uh, yeah. d- does the, the job of yeah. moving things along. They sped it along. They make Arnold a grown, strong Conan. And then they're like, he's strong. So then he starts killing people. Mm-hmm. And then he's really good at killing people. And then they send him to Asia to get, maybe Asia, to get really great at killing people. And then he wasn't a slave anymore. Maybe Asia? Question mark? Right. They were speaking a different language. I think it was Asian. I'm very sure it was Asian. So definitely not Austria, even though Conan has an Austrian accent. So yeah, I'm going to say probably Asia is going on here, even though nobody is really Asian other than Mako. Yeah. Got James Earl Jones is a, is a black dude. It's it's very confusing. He's There's a, a lot of beautiful black ethnicities princess. going on in this movie. Is that like a Mexican dude, the thief that Conan's hanging out with? I don't fucking know. Jerry something. He was a pro surfer. Oh, cool. He was in some other movie. Oh, yeah, Milius has that fucking himself. surfing fetish. Yeah. So he baked all that shit into the Apocalypse Now fucking uh, script and whatever. So yeah, he's just hiring pro surfers to be in his movies. What a weird dude. I like all that surf stuff in Apocalypse Now. Don't break bad oh, on that. Oh, it's a fun. lot of fun. I love that movie. Oh boy, so yeah, he's just like a slave and then he's a gladiator and then he's a warrior and then like the but guy the, throughout that all of this, him. all of his transitions, he's always a man with bangs. Yeah. Which is what every man in this movie is. Everybody's got beautiful flowing hair. With just some some nice sharp bangs up front, uh, so, super weird looking. Side note: everybody's hair is super weird in this movie, Matt. Side, side note: uh-huh. Schwarzenegger's real hair in that movie. Oh wow, that's, that's a healthy head of hair he on that. Started guy. growing it out it's quite seventy nine. Just because he knew someday he was going to need to have Conan bangs. Well, they approached him. And yeah, he knew he was going to play it. Yeah, this one. I yeah. think they were trying to put this together like all the way back since seventy seven. Like, I think yeah, I, I think read. earlier than that. Like yeah. Scripts were bouncing around. Took him a long time to get this uh, together, probably because you know, like cocaine wasn't popular <laughs> enough yet. Such a such a dumb movie. I bet, like yeah. people kept being like, eh, "I don't want to give you any money to make this shit." Yeah, that's fair. But they made it, and Arnold becomes a free man. Giada Taylor Rentis's Aunt Raffy is uh, the main producer on this. She got the money together. Oh, she's fun. It's that De La Rentis? Oh yeah, Aunt Raffy produces this fucking know. movie. I don't know, she that, was really that old wine swilling bitch made Conan. Yeah, yeah. Dino is her uh, her dad or whatever. I didn't know that. I know nothing about her except Poor for buddy, sure. her head was too big for her body. I know you guys all liked her, but I, I never got down. Like this is just there's no. Oh, you still like? Yeah, this, this, this isn't in the past. She's a weird. I'd take that old lady to town as we speak. I take a fat side talking Rachel Ray any day. Oh, get her out of here. Oh, yeah. She, she can does, work at she the does Dirty Harry stroke club. face, though. Yeah. That is kind of... She's a side talker. Like that. Uh, so they make Conan a free man for whatever reasons. He's turned into a gladiator, and then he kills all the other gladiators. Right. So they're like, no more gladiating for you to do. Well, just one guy decides. Just set you free, I guess. He's like, get! He, uh, he white fangs him. Mm-hmm. Come on, get out of here. Listen to me! Go, go! 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 Go on! Go! Listen to me! Go! Get out of here! Go! Go on! Get out of here! Go on! 
out of here. And the narrator sure to let us know. Uh, they teach him how to read and like make him smart. Yeah, which makes no sense. Why the fuck are they they teaching a gladiator how to read and teaching him about the world and then setting so him so that free? when they throw naked this women in front of the him, the worst he, slave owners ever. He doesn't ravage them. He makes tender love. I love, to I them. love this fucking scene where the narrator's telling us that they fucking like basically put him out to stud. Yeah, <laughs> like, fucking broad chicks in for him to impregnate. Yeah. And we get he's literally in a cage and they just bring a naked woman and throw her in the cage like they're two oh, fucking animals. Dude. Uh huh. Oh man, we're gonna have to get with Tom Rock. He'll help us write this film, I bet. We do the, the third sequel, the long awaited third Conan sequel. Right. You ready for this? Uh-huh. But it's when we use Arnold still. He's uh-huh. old now, he's broken down, yeah. and he has to fight he's super old his army of bastard children mm, that have come to claim his throne idea. yeah what do you think where are we gonna find all these genetic specimens to play uh an army of schwarzenegger kids vince mcmahon oh that's true we're getting we're gonna need a lot of steroids out there we're gonna be passing around a lot of steroids trying yeah. to get this cast together budget's but, gonna run high so double up on needles oh, share that's those for sure yeah, yeah you got you gotta share come on yeah. guys come on don't be a prima donna. But I like how he head fakes. Like they throw this chick in, and she's just like all scared, and he's just like, "No, no, no, don't worry." It's like, cool, baby, I'm, a, baby. I'm a cool guy. Chill, he, like, baby, baby. Drapes chill, a blanket baby, baby. over chill. her uh, shoulders to, you know, save her from the embarrassment of her nudity. And yeah. it's just like, I'm, I'm not like that. I, I see what they're trying to have us do yeah. right here, but that's not what's going on. Wait, psych! He just yeah. like throws her down yeah. and just fucking rapes the shit out of her. Yeah, he's just like, like no. Nah, yeah, what what was the that. point of pretending like he was a gentleman and he was like yeah. not going to ravage her for like four seconds just to throw her down on a fucking bed and then just rape the holy hell out of her in a cage was, while a bunch of people stand around fucking just watching, poon hawking, pie hawking, pie hawking, yeah, <laughs> bunch of. Goddamn pie hawkers. Pie hawking all the way through this fucking movie, quite frankly. So he gets out of slavery, gets chased by dogs, falls down a well, and finds a sword. That's right. And this is, I th- we're like an hour into the movie at this point, I yeah. think. Like, literally yeah. nothing has fucking right. happened other than his family died, he was a slave for a long time, now he's found a sword. Yeah, so it's like... Oh, he's got a sword. Maybe he's going to start going for like some kind of revenge thing here. Mm-hmm. But no, he gets out of the cave, scares the dogs up. No, kills the dogs and uses them for pelts, clearly. Yeah, that's he just, this, is, this is so funny. You see, yeah. here I am, this is the dogs. And then in this next scene, I am wearing the I dogs. Did, I am the dog. That's so funny. I am the dog. It's not the dog, it's a fairy. If I remember correctly, the first thing you hear on the director's commentary is just uh, Schwartz. You're going, "Hello, I am John Milius." That's and a good. And then John joke. Milius is like, and, "And I am Arnold Schwarzenegger." And then Schwarzenegger's like, "Ha ha ha!" And if you believe this, you also believe that there are Richard Simmons Juniors running around. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> take a shot at the homosexuals, Arnold. <laughs> Oh, uh, fucking great jokes all around. He's these are really cutting it up on this track. I you, can't. Uh, you just want to hit. Recommend it. Enough. Just want to hit pause and scrap this, and we'll come back to it next week, and we'll just do the. We'll do our review of the. I mean, honestly, the commentator track. That's probably a better, yeah. better use of our time. Much better use. So he all right. He kills the dogs. He's free. He's got a sword. It's revenge uh, time. Uh huh. No, it's not. He makes Maybe. friends with a. Thief so yeah, this is he, he becomes a thief. He just meets a guy who's chained up, and he's just like, "Who are you?" And he's just like, uh, "I'm a thief." And then like next scene, it's just like apparently these guys are just lifelong friends and like thieving together yeah. now. Like it's insane. Like the blonde chick, she shows up in one scene. Like next scene, she's just Conan's girlfriend. Like nobody yeah. like meets or like talks to each other. <laughs> like the- it's, it's insane the way these characters are just thrown together and like. They never interact. It's cool, though, when he and his thief buddy are, like, stoned on the Black Lotus oh, yeah. that that guy gives That's them. That's a great scene. And then and he punches the fucking yeah, camel. Arnold bumps into a camel and then punches it in the face. Literally knocks out a camel. And it's yeah. just, like, so casual and such a quick joke that I, like, looked down and almost missed it. And I was just like, that's an insane thing to just throw in a movie and, like, yeah. just as an aside and then real quick move past. Like, like he really punched that camel in the oh, face. Had to have. There's so many animals had to have died during the making of this movie. Or like, got hurt, yeah. Every fucking 20 seconds, there's, like, a miserable, like, 
crash where horses just like fall down and hit the ground really hard. Yeah. Like, you know, half these horses are just shattering their legs and fucking Milius is putting bullets in them. That's like, all right. right. There on the I've got set. it, guys. Look away, I, girl. I'd like to see some numbers on how many fucking animals died during the making of Conan the Barbarian. It seems like the snakes were the only ones that didn't really get manhandled. Yeah, the, the big rubber ones, they got manhandled pretty hard. Yeah, manhandled Arnold snake. So yeah, at one point I'm just... Uh, bullet point i'm writing down here is just that there is like so little dialogue in this movie it's insane like the characters are all essentially strangers like they don't even know each other but Mm -hmm. they just act like they're but then i was like there's actually not so little dialogue in this movie there's zero dialogue in this movie what there is is monologues it's a series of monologues somebody will monologue and then all the other characters just like stand around and listen to them just like speak gibberish for 10 minutes and there's never any back and forth. No. Like, I don't think there's a single fucking conversation in this movie. It's insane. Yeah. Nobody has any character. It's just like, he is a thief. He is a warrior. <laughs> like, yeah. they have no traits or characteristics, anything. Like, it's this is like playing blank. Everybody's Sega's a blank. Golden Axe or whatever that game was. That's or... exactly what it is. Like, yeah. you might as well just be watching somebody play video games yeah. for all the fucking storytelling that's going on in this insane fucking movie. Schwarzenegger fucks a demon at some point. I got this on my notes. Oh, the witch. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> was before. Nothing. He's just walking down the street. That's like right after Sexy he kills the dog. Sexy lady invites him into her house, and he's just like, yeah. hell yeah. And then he's fucking her, and she turns into a crazy demon and flies away. He throws her naked ass into a fire, mm-hmm. and then she like Which is flies away. A big dick move right there. It's pretty cool. Fucking, throw the bitch you're fucking into a fire. Yeah. She flies out of the building, and then he isn't like, this is spooky and weird. He's like, oh, fuck it. She's gone. I'm just going to mm-hmm. sleep here for the night. Mm-hmm. And then that's right. Then he meets his buddy outside the next morning. Yeah. He's like, I, were you here when I was fucking the demon? No? Okay, we're friends. Okay, now the movie's going to move on. Yeah. The, the demon fucking. We're it, friends. It added up to nothing. This will never come back into the story. Don't ever. even remember it. There's yeah. no reason no. to. Oh, I remember this. That'd probably be a good spot for him to say that. Eventually, another big scene we get is where they uh, they find they're looking for Tulsa Doom and his snake cult. So they find a big snake tower. So they're like, let's climb up this snake tower, and then we're gonna steal some jewels from this snake cult. And then, oh, that's right, because they get the black lotus from the dude uh-huh. before they get high. There's just a scene where they're and fucked up on drugs. Arnold remembers, like, oh wait, I do want revenge. Oh and yes, so I remember. Like, my lifelong yeah. purpose. He's like, hey, street guy, you seen like guys that have this snake head logo and they're bad guys? Mm-hmm. And he's like, mm, can't says I have. Might have something to do with that big snake tower right over there. And then Arnold and his homeless buddy are like, oh, we never looked up. Mm-hmm. I think this is my favorite scene in the movie when they're stealing the jewels from the snake tower. Because they got fucking Tulsa Doom's, like, right-hand man who's just, like, uh, got, like, a fucking Fu Manchu mustache. Yeah. And he's kind of just walking around this apartment, like, uh, fucking the big Lebowski, like, trying not to spill white Russians. Like, he's got, like, the same gait and demeanor as mm-hmm. that. I just think he's a really cool, just, like, secondary bad guy. And he's just got naked ladies everywhere. Yep. And they're just doing weird cult shit. hmm And Conan's, like, trying to steal some shit. But the whole time this is happening, like... A gigantic fucking snake is like sneaking up on him, and it's really right. like suspenseful. I think they do a great job of like milking the tension of like Conan sneaking and the snake slithering up to him, and like yeah, he doesn't pretty see cool it scene. coming. And then he just fights a gigantic snake with a fucking sword, and yeah. it looks pretty cool. Yeah, like for a giant like mechanical for snake they had to puppet. build or something. Like right. yeah. Just a big puppet snake. This, this is a cool fucking scene. And him hacking it up with his fucking sword and he sticks, blood shooting everywhere and he shit. He sticks the sword through its head from underneath. Mm-hmm. So, like, through the mouth all the way up. And his thief friends just, like, fucking lighten up his dome with arrows. Yeah. This now, snake really gets it, man. I read that scene right there mm-hmm. where they shoot all those arrows into the snake's head as it's right above Arnie's head. Sure, yeah. Those were just real arrows. Yeah, yeah. Probably the guy shooting them was on a lot of drugs. Probably Arnold was on a lot of drugs. Do you want to guess who it was that was shooting the arrows? Uh, John Milius. Because he was the best <laughs> archer on the set. What a fucking insane asshole. Just sit, sit, Ar- Arnold. He's Arnold, maybe my favorite Arnold, human being. Arnold, sit still. I got this, man. I got this. Just act like you're wrestling it. I got this, man. <laughs> Pretty cool. 
So if there's one thing I could really just like uh, praise this movie for, it's just this way it sort of paints with tits. Mm. Like just like tits in the foreground, tits in the background. They, if they can just completely fill a frame with tits, this fucking movie figures out how to do it. Yeah. This is why you get Schwarzenegger talking about how gorgeous all the women are so oh, much sure. on the commentary, which gets you so drunk if you're following those drinking rules because he is such a fucking pervert. Yeah, he really is. Most a of the time, he's just talking walker. about how often he gets laid in the movie and how cool it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a burgers. I just was looking for Turbo Man doll. Uh, that's one of my notes in here. He's a tiny that, child. Oh, yeah, there it is. Right after kills a giant snake, uh-huh. you can see I wrote, Arnie pulls tail. Yeah, that's right. We get uh, some more sexuality coming in here when him and the blonde chick are just like, well, that raid went well, so now we're going to start fucking. We're like a couple. And we get like a really, really long, just montage, edited fucking sex scene. Yeah. And I was just like, this is insane sitting here watching this. There used to be a scene like this, basically this exact scene in like every single movie that was released. Right. Like, where it's just like montage, edited, fucking slow motion, Softcore. fucking just, yeah, just bodies grinding Straddling. together. Yeah. Like, nowadays, this shit doesn't happen. You just Mm-mm. get like, People lay down on a bed, cut away. It's clear they had sex. It's established. For so I guess or, it's just or you get or you get some shock indie director that's like yeah, showing that's right. full on penetration. Like, oh, I'm gonna hang some dong here. Yeah, and fucking Vincent Gallo. I'm pretty cool. Yeah, oh, he is pretty cool. But yeah, like this just doesn't exist anymore in movies. And I gotta wonder, like, is it just because there's porn everywhere now so just like throwing yeah, random skin in movies like there's no point to it like it used to be like i don't know one of the only places you could see naked people was to like fucking throw on a movie so like it's just like we gotta throw some slow-mo sex in literally every movie that gets fucking re- like the most insane thing i think I, every once in a while i just realize this and i'm like holy fuck that's real is that you see beverly d'angelo's Hits in the first vacation movie. Like that's, that's a, fuck- a great point. It's a fucking like family comedy. Yeah. They show the mom's fucking tits. That's yeah. insane. There is no way anything close to that would happen in a fucking movie these days. Yeah. Um. Oh, that's a good point. I was gonna say they There's don't just show some good tits too, Matt. Not bad. I feel like they don't show anything anymore because everything's just directed at. You know, making money off of everyone. Yeah, yeah. No one wants to Cash alienate is king. Or isolate anybody, and everything's like there's no hard R movies anymore. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. If they are, which is a shame. Yeah, you had to like get like horror movies. Yeah, anything and, with an R is like an art film of some. There's yeah. no like trash R rated movies yeah. anymore, which is just fucking lame. Like Seagal couldn't. I want to watch this trash. I want fucking blood geysers. I want tits flopping everywhere. This is cinema. Yeah, like what, when Vince McMahon was trying to make like WWE films, he should have just been making it's hard so R movies. He wasn't making hard R movies. Like, you know, I think that first like Out for Justice horror movie shit. with Kane was an R rating, no evil, and then yeah, like yeah, after yeah. that, nothing was. And there was no titties in that yeah, one. No tits whatsoever. There's a butt. If there's anybody who's just like a sleazier, more coked up fucking weirdo in the world than Vince McMahon, and he's. Yeah starts his own idiot film company and he's not throwing tits in all his movies? What sort of world are we living in? Yeah. Well, I've got one thing I want you to do for me, okay? And that's going to be right back over here. Oh, no. <sighs> I've been waiting for this. Okay, I guess okay. you want, you want a little coffee out. or what? Huh? Oh, God, huh? I'll have a coffee. Yeah. You need some more? Huh? <laughs> Try not to get it on the rest of my table here. I won't huh? do that. Can you do that? Huh? You going to get sick? That's a possibility. Huh? Oh. Huh? Oh my God! He's, he's gonna! He's gonna! He's gonna! He's coming to puke! He's gonna puke! He's gonna puke! He's gonna! Yeah, he's gonna puke! That's it. Yeah, it's sickening. Just sickening. Ah, uh, so where was we? Um, at in this movie? we meet Max von Sydow somewhere around here, and he starts telling them like, "Oh, oh yeah, his daughter is yeah. in fucking Tulsa Doom's cult, and she's brainwashed." Oh and yeah, because they to go get him out. They get the big jewel from the Snake Mountain, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Let's just get That's fucked up lived. and live as hell damn kings forever." And then the real king's like, "Get in here, you're in trouble," and he's like, "Not really." Mm-hmm. I just want help. And I think this is the best performance in the movie, probably. This one scene of Max von Sydow just monologuing about his daughter. Because yeah. I think that, like, 
I think he thinks this is real. I don't know that he's acting. I think he really like thought he was a king and his daughter because he's yeah. fucking committed. Oh, absolutely. this movie's fucking ridiculous yeah. and dumb, and he's taking it so seriously. And like, I was getting kind of emotional watching him talk about his poor daughter. Yeah. I was like, Conan, you got to go save this chick. Conan, please help him. But like Conan's thief buddy and his blonde girlfriend are like, nah, we don't want to. Like, yeah. we don't want any part of this. And Conan's like, well, I kind of got this like lifelong goal of revenge against Tulsa Doom that I remember every once in a while. Sure. Like every once in a while it occurs to me, like, oh yeah, I'm dedicating my life to getting revenge on this guy who chopped my mom's fucking head off. I so, just So I've, then like the movie I've been goes back to tell towards you him guys, doing that again. I was just trying to figure out how to bring it up. And then there's another just weird aside where he goes off and like does some other weird shit until he remembers that he needs to be getting revenge of Tulsa Doom again. Yeah. I like it. So he's he's trying to like get in and he uh like beats the shit out of this priest and like steals his robes and then like he's oh, like, that's hanging right. out in this cult. So yeah, right. And, like, they're everybody's like, hippies around. Yeah, like, they're like getting, oh, like, fucked up on drugs and being religious. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, he ditches. It's weird he, shit going on. He ditches them because he realizes it's his fight, not theirs, and he's not going to make them yeah. do it because he knows it's dangerous. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he well he meets Mako in the desert the first. He's a fun guy. And he's all like, I'm insane. Like and Arnold's like, crazy talking. Yeah, you are insane. We're friends now. Ha ha ha. And he's like, do they have flowers at this place? Yeah. <laughs> and then Mako gives no definitive answer. Right. He's just like, bah! And, it, it, and then Arnold's like, ah! And now we just have scenes of Schwarzenegger on a horse just with flowers. Holding flowers, looking like a sexual predator. Yeah. Just for like 10 minutes. Just it's, like him holding flowers, and like nothing's happening. It's like and medieval religious people everywhere, and I'm like, what am I watching? Him on the horseback with those flowers is like the medieval equivalent to like Arnold driving around in a panel van with no windows, yeah, like shaking candy out the window. It feels like just like weirdly like it struck me for the first time watching it now. It just feels like a '60s movie, like. Feels like this is like about like Jonestown or like fucking yeah. you know like the Manson family or something. There's so much cult shit, but it's just like everybody's on drugs. Like everybody's like out there trying to find some sort of new weird religion. <laughs> it's just like Conan the Barbarian's basically in the '60s. Like this, this could you could yeah. take this to 1960s fucking California. <laughs> like the same story being told. So he tricks a uh, homosexual rapist priest. Right, yeah, I, I forgot about the homosexual undertones. Yeah. He's talking about his body. Yeah, he's like, like where are you to, going? You, you need to love your body. body. And Arnold's like, I'm shy, I'm afraid to show my body. And he's like, I'd love to see your body, Arnold. Oh, Jesus, Arnold. He tells him, how do you expect to reach emptiness without knowing your own body? <laughs> At this point, I'm I just don't like, understand what, what the meant. fuck yeah, does that yeah. mean? What are we talking about? Yeah. What am I watching? And then I'm looking through my notes here, and just over and over again, I just keep writing shit like, what is happening? What are we talking about? Yeah. What is this? My my notes uh, read like this. Uh, oh, we forgot one of my favorite lines. You're all sluts. <laughs> it's true. When those girls were trying to proposition him and his buddy for sex, mm-hmm. and Arnold just yells, you're all sluts. So I wrote that down. <laughs> I got, what a weird chick. He made a friend. You're all sluts. Kills a giant snake. Arnie pulls tail. They got drunk. He sets out alone. He meets a wizard, steals a gay priest robe, gets caught and crucified. Yeah. So uh, fucking Arnold gets hurt real bad they don't really show it fucking i don't i don't know he gets caught as an infidel in my notes right here i i have trying to keep track of this movie is like trying to suss out the timeline of a dream i had it just doesn't make sense moment to moment what am i looking at right now the world is all red and we're fighting animated wind monsters oh okay so yeah (laughs) so he tries to get in and he kind of does but he passing around this medallion that he shouldn't have and somebody realizes and they're like you shouldn't have this and so they're like you're a fake bro and then they realize who he is and they just tulsa doom fucks him up real bad they beat the shit out of him and then he's like put him on the tree of woe the tree of woe which is just a dead tree out in the middle of nowhere and like just as soon as I think like this movie's boring as fuck, like yeah. uh, I can't get through this. Something crazy like this happens, and suddenly just 
Arnold's fucking delirious on a tree from sun exposure, just making insane Arnold noises, just like blah, blah. Blah, blah. This is maybe the best movie for random Arnold oh, noises yeah. that there is. Because like, this is his first attempt he's at not acting. talking, he's just only fucking like uh, emoting Arnold. through noises. Yeah. <laughs> like <sighs> There's a fucking, I'm just like, I was just getting bored and now suddenly he's insane and making noises and he's fucking in a bite war with like a Bird puppet, like a Muppet. there's like a fucking Muppet vulture trying to peck at him. So then he just starts biting the fucking vulture's head, it's, and they're just biting each other. It's like this it's clearly a puppet. It's fucking crazy. It's like the scene in Star Wars where R two and Yoda are fighting oh, over yeah. that like biscuit. <laughs> Except it's, that little, like, except Yoda it's, being nuts shit except it's going on. Arnold and a vulture. Yeah, uh. this is, I was just like, how is this possible that like. Five minutes ago, I was thinking about how I'm the most bored I've ever been in my life. And now, right now, this is the most entertained I've ever been in my life. Here's the thing. That trio woe, I do believe, is like actual imagery from original Conan stories. Yeah, I imagine all this stuff is, but like, it just seems like they're just like uh, some of it is, let's some take, of it isn't. Instead of taking one of the Conan stories and making yeah. a movie out of it, they were just like, let's take every Conan hits. story that was ever told and cram it all into one insane movie that makes no sense. And from what I understand, half of the like lore in this movie is Cole the Conqueror lore and not even Conan lore. What? Yeah. Oh come on. Yeah. That's. It's Kevin How could Sorbo. that be true? <laughs> How could they? Uh, but if they would have just, I think, yeah, like you said, if they would have just kind of stuck with the actual Conan shit, because mm-hmm. anytime like they pull like something where it's like, oh yeah, that's depicted in like Conan shit, like there's just tons of cool fucking images. All that. Uh, what's the artist that did all that shit? The Frenzetta or whatever. Frank oh Frenzetta yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that artist. Anytime like they lean a lot of panel van type shit. Oh, but his shit was amazing. Yeah. Like anytime they like lean in on stuff that like was like inspired by his artwork it's cool as fuck Mm -hmm. and then everything else just kind of is so then like uh tulsa doom puts him on the fucking tree of woe yeah and then his friends just come save him and I was like, weren't his friends captured? I'm just losing track of this no, shit. No, they just didn't come like along. It seems like they just keep getting captured and then, like, are arbitrarily free. Yeah. And, like, they keep on fighting Tulsa Doom, but then, like, not to the death, and then, like, go off and do other things and then fight yeah. him a fucking gin. So, like, the next time they decide, they get him off the tree of woe, yeah. fucking Mako the wizard does a bunch of crazy, like, paintings on his face and shit. We're trying to, like, nurse him back to health, which is when... Everything gets red and the wind demons right. come. And I'm just like, somehow that all results in Conan now being healthy again after they fucking fight the... They fought off the demons. The they wind stopped demons him from dying, yeah. The Red Knight. And uh, then they're like, let's paint ourselves up crazy camo and go crash another Tulsa Which Doom party. Which looks cool. Fucking again. Like, this shit's got to go down. Yeah. Let's just keep on crashing his parties and stealing his shit until finally, like, this, this movie comes to a head just by... Your accident, I feel like. You get We're just a, gonna stumble t- towards an ending at some point accidentally. You get some great up the loincloth thong mm-hmm. shots yeah. of uh, the oh, Valkyrie yeah. girl mm-hmm. as she's uh climbing up the side of the mountain. And then when they get into the mountain, it's the everybody's favorite, the orgy room. Yeah, I love just the absolute look of glee on Schwarzenegger's face as he's I was just gonna bring orgy. that up to you. Like, like, I have no idea if he knew they were filming right? during the shit or whatever, or if that was just literally him, like, being so excited that to was be on gonna this be my movie question set to with you. fucking titties everywhere. Like, yeah, was, or were they like, Arnold, just kind of like, everybody else is like, serious slash disgusted and then you just kind of get like a wry smile about you like oh so there's just an orgy going on there's a bunch of like fucking thugs carrying around a gigantic fucking pot of stew for no reason body parts it's got like rubber hands floating around in it and it's all green and like we just keep seeing the stew over and over again (laughs) it's like what is this stew like why are we focused on it so much what are they why are they carrying this giant thing of stew around everywhere what why is this stew so important? Ah. You think this was like the crux of the film for all the fucking screen time this explained. stew gets? It's, it's never, explained. never explained. Fucking Tulsa Doom's hanging out, and then he just turns into a giant snake. Right. 
yeah. for no reason, and it's never mentioned again, and it never leads to anything. It's just like, also, he yeah. can turn into a snake. Yeah. They kind of talked about it earlier where they're like, there's legend that he's a snake and a thousand years old. I think it took 40 minutes for him to transform into a snake. <laughs> the scene goes on fucking forever. And his face keeps stretching out. He doesn't do it for any reason. He doesn't do anything as the snake. We never see him as a snake again. (laughs) It's fucking insane. This movie is insane. But he's got the king's daughter with him. That's Yeah, we do establish that. That's important. And she's fucking brainwashed. She does not want to leave. They're trying to like get her out of there. And she's like, no, I fucking love being fucking in this witchy snake cult. It's cool as shit. We get fucking hands stew. There's orgies everywhere. Like, my life is great. Why would I want to go back to my dumb king dad? Like, this, I, this is perfect. I like how Arnold and uh, his little buddy with Sebado or whatever the hell his name mm-hmm. is. Yeah. They're like it's, trying it's to. Sebado. They're trying to like creep around legitimately. And then that huge white bitch yeah. that Arnold's banging. Sure. She tries to sneak around, uh-huh. but she's like in plain sight. And then there's another scene where she's like climbing something and like kicking dangling chains. And it's like. Bitch, how does nobody noise. hear you? She's, like she's camoed up, but yeah. she's just like full in a china shop and yeah. this whole fucking like cave hangout at Tulsa. And Dunes. she in real life is like a professional dancer. There's nothing graceful about her. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. She's got the thighs for it. They I found her see that. She was recommended for the film after her performance in all that film. Oh wow. So we're gonna get a dancer here, or we're gonna get a fucking Mr. Olympia. Bavarian fucking bodybuilder. We're gonna get a professional surfer. Like yeah. it is was there any point during like the process of putting this movie together where somebody was like, hey, what if we hired actors? That's why they got what if we got some actors that's why they to got, act in this uh, movie? Max von S- S- whatever. Sidell, yeah. Sidell. He fucking that's why you got kills it in that one scene. James Oscar Earl nominated Jones is fucking Mako. It in this fucking movie too. Like this is another guy where, like, when he's monologuing, like, I'm just like, does James Earl Jones know this is a movie? Because I think he's just living as some sort of crazy fucking god king. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think he's, they literally, they fucking, like, hearted darkness to this shit, I think, where they were probably just out in the wilderness, legit, just having drug fueled orgies. Right. Like, every once in a while, they happen to film some of it yeah. and, like, make it into a movie. And they're like, you know what? I think we can make a story out of that. Everybody's got blue eyes, even James Earl Jones. Yeah. I don't know why. That's it's never mentioned. Milius' like, weird Hitler complex. <laughs> it's, never, it's never a thing that, that anybody talks about. I don't know. It's fucking weird. So, uh, they disturb the Black Panther Party. Mm-hmm. They start fighting everybody. Is this where Schwarzenegger gets in a fight with, like, that fucking beefy Warhammer guy? Yeah. That guy is, like, I think, like, my fitness goals right there. Like, oh, the could, floors? If I could be anybody, I'd security be... Security guard from yeah, Mallrats? That fucking beefed up this era with his fucking bangs and his flowing hair, just carrying around a gigantic war hammer. We, uh, fucking veins trying to rip through his fucking skin because he's got so many steroids just coursing through his whole body. That's he looks Sven great. Whatever yeah, his name is, sure, yeah. He was just in Hard Target a couple weeks ago. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah he's, he's uh, in a lot of Arnold movies. Popping. I think he's in like every Arnold movie. This yeah, year. like he just like he's either he a bad guy, guy or a stunt man. Yeah. yeah. And Arnold got him the job in this one. Too. He looks so good. He's great in though, this yeah. fucking movie, though. This is like peak him. He's just like on. on oh top yeah, of he's fucking. fucking he's like Jesse Ventura, every bit as jacked as Schwarzenegger. Oh, yeah. and, and just this. their big beefy bodies just slapping yeah. together over and over again. I'm watching this and I'm like, well, this is filmmaking. This is why you yeah. go out to Hollywood. You want to fucking put shit like this up on the screen. Him and the big Lebowski dude, he is also taller than Schwarzenegger. Right. Yeah, that guy's like sneakily fucking huge. Yeah. He's just got like bad posture and like no he's real got physique. That, he's so, Joey Ramone yeah, tall. you don't really realize what a fucking monster he is. Yeah. You He's a pro football player. I want to say that dude. That was. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But they, you they could did tell a... that guy's just like legitimately sleazy. Like that guy's just drug oh, yeah. vibes are just insane. Yeah. I love just like the presence he just brings yeah. to, to fucking his his screen presence. There's just a lot you of could, stories up in his could hair. You could see him fingering a young lady's oh, butthole man. at the registry on a Tuesday night. Absolutely. You know that that would happen. That would happen. So they destroy the little place they're at, trying to beat each other up. 
Right. And then they're like, we got the princess. Let's get out of here. We all made it out of here. And then James Earl Jones is like, mm, I turned back into a human being. Yep. And now I'm going to turn a snake right. into an arrow and I'm going to kill your your bitch. So this is the first time I Conan and his girlfriend ever have a conversation is when she's dying. <laughs> I think yeah. this is the, the only dialogue they share where like somebody... One of them speaks, and then the other one responds to what the other one's saying. I don't even remember in him the responding. Entire, in the entire fucking film. They actually have a back and forth. I want to breathe my last breath but yes, into your mouth. Fucking James Earl Jones taking a snake and randomly getting stiff, and then him shooting it like an arrow. Yeah. It's one of the coolest fucking yeah, things I've ever really seen. it really is cool. That's a great way to kill somebody. Ripped off by the G.I. Joe movie when they had fucking Ooh, Serpentor. Serpentor. Yeah. Uh, Which is I, always a uh, very unwelcome uh, change to that cartoon. I like. I was a Cobra Commander kid myself. There's never into Serpentor. You, were, you weren't a fan of the Cobra Law? Shit, but, but it was pretty cool how Serpentor could take snakes and make them stiff la, 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 and then la, la, use la, them la, la, as la. knives and stabbing weapons. Yeah. Serpentor was supposed to kill Duke, but after the Transformers movie came mm-hmm. out and all those kids lost their shit over Optimus Prime dying. Oh, yeah, that's right. They, they fucking had to change it. Like 80 yard the whole yeah, movie. Like, like, Duke's uh, still alive. Duke's not dead. Dumb. We didn't need Duke anymore. We already established his younger half-brother, played by Don Johnson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Falcon. This is a cool fucking character right there. Grizzly-voiced Don Johnson should have done a lot more cartoon work. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Opportunity missed. So basically, uh, the way this ends, which I noticed kind of for the first time watching it this time, is just... The exact same ending uh, that Milius used for Apocalypse Now. <laughs> like, he's just like, how are we going to wrap this up? Conan's fought Tulsa Doom like a million times, yeah. but like, it's not come to anything. Let's just do the Apocalypse Now ending where there's just a big fucking crazy religious ceremony and Conan just walks up and chops his fucking head off. And yeah. then we can roll credits because the movie's over. But he throws the head down the stairs. Uh-huh. That's some great sound yeah. effects. Oh. It's just like fuck. This whole thwap. fucking scene just like looks cool. Visuals yeah. is great, but I'm just like moment to moment, just none of it makes any sense. <laughs> like, yeah. What's happening here? Uh, what are we doing? He killed. Why is Conan able just to walk he up to him and kill him without any sort of fight? What is this? He movie? killed a guard. I guess that's true. He killed a guard, okay? But you get the nice, like, uh, book-ended symmetry of uh, Conan's mom's head getting chopped off and then Tulsa Doom's head getting chopped off. Yeah. It's just like, we're going to open and close the film with some beheadings, which is a smart move. I think more movies should do that. that and then he sets the castle on fire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was supposed to throw the thing into, like, the balcony window. Yeah. But he missed. Right. And then the thing just caught on fire. And I it was... was they, they couldn't it's shoot it again. It never made any sense to me how he just like swings around a metal ball that's got fire in it and then throws it at like stone steps. Right. And then somehow like all of this stone yeah. is on fire. I'm just like, yeah. what's burning? Yeah, he was supposed Why is there so much fire? He was supposed to throw it into the balcony window, but he missed. And, and they were just uh, like, ah, just fuck like, it. That like, set's already on yeah, fire. Whatever. Like, oh, well, we're not going to go back and like shoot it again. No, like, that's no. that's not going to happen. So we got too much partying to do. Like fucking, let's wrap it. <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't make any sense visually. Who cares? It's I just, Conan the Barbarian. I just scored another bag of blow from these Spaniards. <laughs> they were in Spain. Yeah, man. that's a Spanish blow in the eighties. It's, it's legendary. It's oh, stuff a legend. Some of the best. So that's it. That yeah. Yeah, and then we move on to Conan the Destroyer, which I've never seen, which but destroys. I hear it's fucking awful. That's like my just understanding. So fucking bad, which right. makes me like wonder, like, why haven't I never watched that? A really, really super terrible Conan. Like, yeah. if it's way worse than this movie, like that sounds great. Yeah, it might be better than this movie might just for being really bad. Dig into it. I think I'm gonna dig into that. Maybe movie. We'll, maybe we'll make a theme month of uh, awful sequels. Yeah, I've, I've got a note here. We're just before the ending, I wrote just paused it to see how much is left, and there's a half an hour left. How can there be a half hour left? 
Nothing is happening. Yeah, I did the same thing. I I stopped the I was movie like going with a half hour left. I was left watching this movie because I was like, I gotta I gotta eat dinner. I can't. This is the first time I've ever like paid attention to Conan. Like yeah. this is a movie where you throw it on in the background. Right. Like, you half pay attention to it. Like whenever something fun happens, you like perk up and like yeah. uh, check it out. And you're like, oh yeah, this is cool to just like sit and watch this and have it be the only thing you're looking at and like try and actually just like absorb right. it as a, it's 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 a it's fucking a, it's, a it's an much. undertaking man yeah. they tr- they i'm exhausted I'll, I'll save my thoughts but yes we're finished with it we told you what it was uh we're gonna talk about some things yeah. that are coming up coming attractions coming and your way and we're gonna talk about how we really feel yeah our feelings and judgment days Absolutely imperative that this job look like civilian operation. Get down! Kiss the floor. I expect a little cooperation. Ralston, I expect you to stay out of my way. Put the damn gun down, soldier! Somewhere in America. A secret war is being waged. This is a case of national security. Go. A war of deception. It's a daylight hit. I come over to talk about the bomb that went off yesterday. I got two people dead. Fought by a phantom army. Sergeant Buck Adwater killed Laos in 74. How can they be officially dead and two of them locked up in there? It's classified. Now, he's the only one that stands in their way. I got a feeling the next time we run into each other, we're going to have a killing. Termination with extreme prejudice. Anyone could be the enemy. Tell the FBI to kiss my... Want to tell me about it? I can't talk about it. I got to do something about it. Nothing is what it seems. What the hell's military robbing banks in Texas for? And unless he can stop them... It's poison. Everything he stands for is at stake. Very unusual. What is Ordering the termination of an American civilian peace officer, clearly loyal to the country and in the process of bringing a known criminal to justice. What we're going to do is we're told. Right, Sergeant? Kill him. Kill him like an animal. The only thing that ever scared the hell out of me, Cash, was myself. We are space age high tech, and we get caught by some stone age cowboy. Nick Nolte. Extreme Prejudice. Adios, amigo! Only one man is crazy enough to pull a stunt like this. (laughs) Only one man is crazy enough to go after it. You pull the cord! Patrick Swayze. Now you pull it! Six seconds! Keanu Reeves. Pull it! Point Break, rated R, starts Friday at theaters everywhere. I pushed that burp out right before you hit record. Yeah. I edited it out, edited it's, it's, it out for you. It's going to be a little bit less You're work welcome. I have to do when we're putting this together. One last Every one. Every little burp of. that I uh, don't have to deal with is yeah. just like a, a tiny little gift to me. Just a tiny little gift. I like to pair them up with my talking so they're on top yeah. of each other, and then you have no sometimes, choice but to leave them in. Sometimes it's, it yeah. gets it gets a little rough in there. You're like, oh, he incorporated it into his English. Digging down English. His audio files, trying oh, to do delicate uh, surgery. Uh, Gives him as much of the burp out as I can yeah. with it still making sense. Yep. It's, uh, it's an art form, really. I'm one of the best. You're right. Mm. Is that what I was saying? Yeah. Yeah. One of the best people I know. That's me. What do the best people of the internet think about Conan okay. the Barbaria let's, Venturer? Let's, uh, the Barbaria let's get into Venturer. it because there's a lot of crazy shit going on in this they, movie. I, they got to be and long. It attracts a lot of crazy people to it is what I've seen. And uh, It's going to be long. Just there's like some crazy the shit here. Um, not necessarily. I've got a... One that's decently I'm long, and then water. I paired it up with one that's really short, you know. But uh, right, this I'm one right back. here. Back, blow Let's my jump mind. into it. We're uh, Judgment Day. We're getting into the reviews. One bullets and five bullets. This first one bullet review is from Amazon user Sid the Elf, and he's gonna take us on a little journey here. Sid does not like Conan the Barbarian. Hmm. He says. 
It's too bad they didn't go with the original idea. Tom Hanks and Conan sleepless in Mongolia. That's how he starts it off. That's that's the icebreaker. Ugh. He goes on. Do the comedy for the pros. Now. Well, let's just say that we, Sid the Elf, he's apparently a we, were not impressed by Conan the Barbarian. This movie was a chick flick in a thin disguise. There was even the cheesiest death scene in movie history when Arnold's Butterface got iced. We gathered from reading some of the reviews by the Dungeons and Dragons losers that love this movie that Conan was a book once upon a time. It could have only been one of those cheap novels they have at the checkout lines in supermarkets, because this crap was a bad romance novel. In fact, the only people Sid can imagine liking this movie are girls. Or maybe men seeking men in your beloved chat rooms, dorks. Arnold's in the middle of his three injections a day and dips on props in between... Wait. And dips on props in between takes stage of his career? That's not a sentence. And he runs around all movie without a shirt. Perfect for sweetie pies. There was a complete Whoa. lack of anything cool in this movie with the exception of a few beheadings and the fact that the dude from Spinal Tap made a cameo. This was certainly not the Arnold we've come to know and love. Another reason these nerds love this movie so much is because it reminded them of Star Wars because Darth Vader played the villain again. Oh boy. So if you're an Arnold fan and want to see how he started his career, just be glad it got off the ground to give you Predator, Total Recall, and Commando and ask no further questions. We are just glad we didn't start off our Arnold viewings with this one or we would have never been lucky enough to decide on his classics. Stay far away. And if you do rent this one, when you return it to your local video store, scream, He's gone! The evil's gone from here! One bullet review from Amazon user Sid the Elf, who I think is legitimately out of his mind. Yeah, he does like a lot of internet bullying uh -huh. in that review. Yeah. But like also shows his cards enough to let us know that he too is an internet dork. <laughs> Without question. And it's like... Feels legit unhinged to me. I don't know. I don't think. I don't think this is a gimmick. This, 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 this next one, I can see him shotgun and a white claw. Is much me more having to call him out. Much more to the point. We got some brevity going on here from Letterboxd user Derek Armijo. He says, "Conan, what is boringest in life?" One <laughs> bullet review from Letterboxd user Derek Armijo. <laughs> Derek. He's all right. He gets, he gets it, it. He gets it. He gets it. He gets it. Okay, uh, there's some decent criticisms about this movie, rightly so, but also there's some people who fucking love this movie, despite all its weirdness. We got a couple five-bullet reviews. Our first is from Amazon user Omsgangwilla. I don't know how to say that. Whatever. Okay. It doesn't matter. He says, Conan the Barbarian is one of my favorite movies. Conan the Destroyer is one of the worst movies ever made. Ooh. I recommend this collection because I think it has good cover art even though Destroyer is terrible. Just letting you know this set contains the extended version of Conan the Barbarian with a 129-minute runtime, unlike the theatrical 127-minute runtime. Oh. I'm pretty sure that every Blu-ray or DVD you get of Conan is the extended version, but on the digital format, I can only seem to find the theatrical version. I checked iTunes, trademark, Movies Anywhere, trademark, Vudu, trademark, and Amazon Prime Video, trademark. He wrote in all the trademarks. They all seem to have the theatrical version. The extended version only changes one thing, the ending, but I think it improves it a bit because it adds the princess in it. I recommend watching it on Blu-ray, not digital. I also recommend skipping Conan the Destroyer. Trust me, it's really bad. You'd have to see it to believe it, but just don't see it. Also, if your child wants to see this movie and you don't want them to see it, just let them. They'll be fine. Remember that they are growing faster than you can see, and if they're over 10 or 11, they should see this movie. It has a good message and is very inspirational. Ah. <laughs> okay. Five bullet review. From Amazon user Ohms Gangla. <laughs> it's weird, the parenting advice at the end. They're growing faster than you can see, Matt. Yep. Trust me, this yep. guy on the internet knows your kid better than you know He's your kid. He's been watching them closely. Five bullet review from Amazon user Vito is how we're going to wrap things up here. Vito, maybe Vito, Vito but he put two T's in it, so I'm, yeah, I'm pronouncing Vito. it Vito. He says, saw the movie in the theater as a kid. 
I won a bodybuilding competition, served multiple army tours as a ranger, retired as a history professor, and Conan was an inspiration beyond words. When art touches the soul, feudal words are much too primitive to grasp it. I assigned students to write essays on this movie, and I am convinced that no other historical fiction comes close. Milius was blacklisted by Hollywood perverts, but John, this big thank you is for the tens of millions of warriors that you inspired. Oh. Crom! Oh. Five bullet review from Amazon user Vito. I thought that was a nice way to end it because he's clearly some sort of Milius zealot. So that's uh, that's, say, that's a, nice, a nice way to end Nice our little lives. Uh, peek into what sort of weird fans Milius has uh, acquired over there. There's a lot of like uh, His just peoples. fucking clearly insanely insecure dudes who like uh, seem to love John Milius and all these internet fucking reviews. Oh boy. I'm man's man, I assure you. I assure you. I've never touched pain to another man's pain. Matt, let's get into your final thoughts and your rating of Conan the Barbarian. Uh, boy. First of all, it's just, oh, man, I don't know where to start. Mm. Just like that movie, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know where to start. Right. Start with a Nietzsche quote. I think. Is, is, are there any other ones? Like Nietzsche said. What are, what are his B-sides? He who smelt it mm-hmm. did, in fact, dealt oh, it. Yeah. And wise. what we're dealt here is two hours and nine minutes of what should have been an hour and a half, this, hour, 45 minute movie. Yeah, I'm going to say in which, I'm going to say this is a full hour too long. Yeah. I think an hour and 10 minute movie. Would I'm be thinking fine. it's you make a movie about a orphaned slave whose mm-hmm. family and people are murdered that's and right. he wants revenge. And if you want to give him a sidekick, that's cool. Should be so he, much more simple than he, what we got. He definitely doesn't need that whole love interest thing. You can introduce that later. I mean, yeah, we'd a, already thrown plenty of yeah. titties in the movie. So like, like, we know he smashes Poon. Like, mm, we get it. Yeah, that's been established. You can try to do the whole love interest thing in a second one as a cheap ploy to make a sequel, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, just too much going on here. Just way too much. Some of it looks really fucking cool. Some of it looks really bad. Mm-hmm. There's a scene in particular in the orgy scene where a guard gets his stomach cut open and you see him rip open his blood pack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed that, too. Uh, I mean, that's the same scene where there's literally rubber yeah. hands in a stew. <laughs> yeah, there's that, too. It's a Spencer. Or Clearly not Spencer, rubber uh, hands. Yeah, spirit Halloween outlet store. For sure. <laughs> uh Speaking of which, it's Halloween season. Get your ass at the, your local spirit and look at all the cool, yeah, creepy shit they get got. Get out there. It's Halloween, damn it. Again, just so much going on. The soundtrack is just badass. Like, the score is just unbelievable. Other than that, mm-hmm. there's just stuff. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what this movie is. It's not really good, and it's not really <laughs> bad. It's, it's both those I things. I just got to say that we score movies... From nothing to five, That's and right. so I'm gonna find the exact middle and say two and a half. Two and a half bullets for Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, fuck. Because it's man, it just it is. It's this isn't a movie. It's a screensaver. It's like a blacklight poster. There's just like I said, you could shuffle up all the scenes and play them in completely different orders, and you wouldn't fucking notice. Which doesn't make for a good movie, but I, I kind of enjoy it on the level of just like it's something you can throw on in the background and like half yeah, yeah. fucking pay attention to it. And every once in a while, you're going to see something real fucking cool. Um, you can stop paying attention to it for like 15 minutes at a time and then like come back to it and you, you didn't miss anything. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So like it's easy to take down. It's a, it's a it's an enjoyable watch on that level. Um, but it's just absolutely not a movie, so I can't rate it as as a fucking uh, solid, fully functioning film. Because it doesn't function as one. I also gave it two and a half bullets, Matt. I feel like we're right on the same page here. Yeah. G- again, two and a half. Took a lot out of me. Yeah. Watching this from start yeah. to finish and actually paying attention to it. That's not how you should watch this movie. If somebody... Put it on at a party. That's how you watch Conan the Barbarian. If somebody asked me like what I meant by two and a half... Mm-hmm. Like for any movie, I'd be like watchable. Yeah, and that's kind of what that movie is. Five bullet scenes, and there are one bullet scenes, and yes. they just like go back and forth, right, willy nilly. And so there you have it. Yeah, there you have it. Conan the Barbarian. I'm probably never going to watch this again without the commentary. Here's now. your headline. The commentary makes it.
Here's your headline. Conan the Barbarian. Mm-hmm. It's no Red Sonia. That's I've definitely never seen Red Sonia all Me the way neither. through. That's another one of these. I think it's even more bits offensive. and pieces on cable fucking yeah. movies. There's no. I think that's the only way anyone's ever seen it, except for the three people opening weekend. We got one more week in this John Milius month oh. here. What is best in life? The masculine philosophies of John Milius, and I think. Uh, this next one's really going to be a treat for us, Matt. Yeah? This next one, I think, is probably one of the most overlooked, underrated films of the mm. 1980s. Mm. We're dipping back into the filmography of Walter Hill. Oh, uh, he's Old a good Baby Oil and Blow favorite, written by John Milius, starring Nick Nolte. We're going to be watching Extreme Prejudice to Ooh. cap off this whole John Milius month. Oh. And when we move on into the fall, it's going to be Labor Day. We're going to say bye-bye to summertime with the best saying bye-bye to summertime movie ever made. Fucking two weeks is Point Break, Matt. So oh, I just want fuck. you to get ready. Get ready for Point Break. This is oh, hell yeah. going to be one of the hallmark episodes of Baby Oil and Blow. I'll tell you that right also, now. Also, kids... If you're keeping track when mm-hmm. you pull up the podcast on your iTunes or whatever you're yeah. on, we're coming down to episode 100. Oh, fuck. That's going to be a milestone right yeah. there. It's going to be a big fucking big dick show, I'm sure. We're going to get uh, some some guests, some special guests. Oh, yeah? Yep. Uh, Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. That's very exciting. Um, we're going to go down to his fucking tiki bar, drink some cans yep. of beer. We're going to get him. We're also going to get uh, uh, Steven Seagal's stuntman. Ooh. Yep. That's a that's a get yeah, right there. There's some real names we're getting here. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Uh, I look forward to it. You know, pay attention. It's coming your way. Baby oil and blow. Stay safe. It's a long road when you're on your own And it hurts when they tear your dreams apart And every new town just seems to bring you down Trying to find a peace of mind Use a friend. Where 